What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little passes at this is a dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dead Meat After Show for Chucky Season 2. Today we're talking about Episode 2, The Sinners Are Much More Fun. And we have a bunch of the cast today to talk with us. Hey everybody, we got Bjorkvin Arnerson, who plays wow. Devin Evans, of course, returning from Season 1. Olivia Allen Lind as Lexi Cross, again from Season 1. And newcomer to the series, Bella Higginbotham. Hi, nice to meet you. Yes, Hi. you play Nadine. Yes, Nadine, last name on sure yet unless there is one mm. Mm. nadine tilly maybe oh. i don't know <laughs> great to talk to you after a a fun uh character driven episode i think i think episode one was a lot of action right off the bat and then episode two is like okay now we're in this new place and we're gonna set the table kind of still got a kill in there but it's a lot more of like exploring how these characters are yeah yeah, Bella, uh, your introduction with Nadine is Don always manages to bring in these new characters, even though Chucky has so many characters established. And you're like, I think we're good. We don't need any new ones. And then he'll bring in a new one and you're like, oh, but I like them. <laughs> your character is a nice little breath of positive energy and fresh air yes, here. Yes, I think we definitely need Nadine. All, the characters have gone through so much at this point and our main three are just so they're feeling so bummed out, you know, and I think they kind of need a Nadine to get them like, no, 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 you know, this is this is a fun series. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> how was it entering a series that was so established, not only from a season of television, but also from like 30 years of, of films? It was a little intimidating. Um, I remember whenever I booked it, I was like, whenever I auditioned, in fact, I was like, oh my gosh, it's Chucky. Like, I mean, you know who Chucky is. He's such a pop culture icon. And I, like, not gonna lie, I hadn't seen um, the show yet before I auditioned. But once I like got the call back and everything, I binged it and I really liked it, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like seeing all the kids and I was like, Oh gosh, I hope they like each other. I hope they're nice. <laughs> I don't know. I hope they like me. Like I was so I was definitely like prepared for the worst, but literally the best thing happened. Like everyone is so sweet and everyone is so welcoming. When I say everyone, I mean actually everyone. And I think that really comes from the top. Like Don Mancini is like such a collaborator. He's interested in his work and like bringing about the Chucky universe. And I think that really shows through in, in his body of work, but also in the environment he creates. And it's just been very welcoming. And I love it here. It's a Chucky family. That's definitely the sense I get from the past few months I've been covering the movies and just watching tons of behind the scenes stuff. And it seems like right from the start, that's kind of the the uh, atmosphere that was driven on set, especially in these later ones when Don gets more control over the series and is like directing the movies himself and then doing the show. It just seems like he really fosters this familial atmosphere. It's great. Yeah. When did you both from season one get to meet uh, Bella? Was it, did you have rehearsals beforehand or was it just like, you know, you're on set and we're starting to do this right away? The first time we, okay, so we met Bella on Zoom. So I, <laughs> I had a chemistry read with Bella. Oh, okay. So what, explain what that is. I, so basically I did like a few auditions. So they, they picked out a few Nadines and then they had me go on Zoom and read with like a few of them. And they were all amazing. But there was just something about Bella. It was just like, oh, that's Nadine. Like, that is her. She's so perfect. She's just like, she just emits joy whenever she smiles. And I was like, that's just what the perfect Nadine is. Just like a happy, she's just happy. She's a happy presence. She always has been. So I was like, oh my gosh. So when I was auditioning with Bella, I was literally texting Dawn like under, under the camera being like, yes, 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 yes. Bella, 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 Bella. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's so sweet. It happened. And then I think we actually met for the first time on set. Yeah. yeah. And then we just had like an instant connection. Bjorkman second second guessing me. Bjorkman, when do you think we met? I, I think we met before shooting. We hang out in the We did. We, we met before shooting and we went to Omomo. Oh, oh. And, and you asked me how, like, 
how to say your name, Bjorkman, and I said it right, and you were proud of me, and I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorkman, have you ever, speaking of like chemistry reads, that's something I'm, I, I think is so interesting. Is that something you had to do for season one at all? Because your relationship with Jake is so important. Oh, yeah. I think Zach uh, got booked for Jake first, so when I was doing Devin, I was the one who was like doing the chemistry reads, mm-hmm. you know? So it was like, you know, like I was part of the list of Devins who were doing chemistry with Zach and stuff. It was kind of cool being on the other side of that. Yeah. Well, so then I kind of learned all the details like afterwards and how Don was like, oh, I like him the most and stuff. But like during the interview, I was like, oh, let's do the scene with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's especially so important for you too because, you know, your characters have this romantic arc. It's so great to really see it flourish in season two and you're both just so sweet. And I don't know, has that been something since season one has come out? Have, you know, what's the fan reaction been like? I have to imagine that you two are really important to a lot of people. Yeah, exactly that. I think, you know, I, I see, you know, uh, like comments and like, uh, I don't know, posts, I guess, I don't know, people, you know, talk about how, you know, they've been seen and, you know, feel like that the characters kind of, you know, were portrayed well. And I was just like, okay, I guess I did a good job. No need to be nervous anymore. Uh, I just have to, you know, keep doing that. You know, I feel honored to be able to kind of represent uh, a community that hasn't really been represented a lot. I feel that confidence in season two so far from you because I feel like your character is a bit sassier and yes, a bit he has some more fun. really funny lines in episode two. Oh man, when that nun says that you're underweight, your delivery of thank you made <laughs> thank us laugh you. so hard. It was <laughs> it was possibly the funniest line of the episode, which is tough when you've got Jennifer Tilly in an episode. Oh but my it was it was so good. And I like that uh with your character, we were able to get the comic relief of kind of the sass against the Catholic institution that you're being introduced to while we still got the emotional impact from Zach about, yeah, we blew up a kid in the previous episode. I'm glad that that wasn't smoothed over. Yeah, I did. Um, I did really like that scene, you know, like when we get into our new room and them are like, oh, awesome, new room. And then Jake's out just down there crying. I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot. I need to yeah. comfort it. Oh, crap. Uh, like, you didn't know Gary. It was just... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, Gary, I'm... It's kind of sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we barely knew him. <laughs> so you're filming in this very oppressive looking Catholic school. And where was that all one location? Is that a real building or is a lot of that sets? I think it was a mixture of a set and a real building. Like some like the, like some scenes were in a real building, but most of it was sets. And it was kind of crazy because it like just like looked like I was in the building. There's the hallway with rooms that kind of led into like nowhere. It was really weird. It was kind of eerie being in being in the city because it felt like a building in there. We had this huge studio and then they just built all like Lexi and Nadine's room, the boys' room. Um, I think the only thing that we actually filmed in the real church was the, like, in the real Catholic school was the church. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. When we walk in, that was a real yeah. school. In the whole, um, what's that room called? With all the, the chairs and stuff. <laughs> the cafeteria and the room with all the chairs and, like, the priest guy doing his thing. That yeah. was at an actual church, yeah. So there were a few, there were a few scenes at um, a place in Toronto called Wycliffe College, and it was gorgeous in there it was absolutely incredible it looked like scary hogwarts it was like that's what i said we were watching it last night yes did not want to be stuck in there alone at night it was (laughs) terrifying i was like oh it's haunted there's no way it's not not, nothing can look that scary and not be haunted yeah we were saying that it felt very hogwarts and that nadine uh felt like a hogwarts character like yes nadine feels like a she she reminds me like both of, of kind of a Harry Potter character, but also like an anime, like a slice of life anime character. I don't know if it's because I think of it's like a slice of life, you know, like school anime, but just like the hair and the big glasses. And, and then she's like, I'll tell you my secret if you tell me she's yours. She's so quirky and cute. It's like, oh, she's like a cartoon. I love her. <laughs> I know. And now I'm now after, you know, one episode, we've met her and we really like her. Now I'm worried all her limbs are going to get cut off. I or know. Something. I'm so scared for her. Like, I don't trust Don anymore after all this Nika shit. I mean, all you can say is that, like, no one is safe, really. Everyone thought that Allie was going to die last year mm. because she was, <laughs> cause her character was so awful. But she survived. Yeah. So maybe she'll die this year. My favorite thing, though, is reading through all the fan theories. 
I love yeah. reading. Ooh, yeah. what are some of the, I guess without accidentally spoiling anything, are there any that you've seen that are just so, like, I guess, out of left field that are just so wrong, but you kind of wish they were right? <laughs> There's, okay, so I, I keep seeing ones because because people see like Nadine's hair and are like, wait, is that like Chucky or like Glenn and Glenda? Or like, you know, and I'm like, but we already saw who's going to play Glenda. So why? Okay. All red haired people are related. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Yes. Nadine is related. <laughs> well, that was the thing with uh, last season with Ms. Fairchild, the biology yeah. teacher. People were like, yeah, exactly, I think that's yeah. Glenn or Glenda grown oh, up. And I was like, sure. I don't even think those ages match. <laughs> it doesn't make any, doesn't make sense. any sense. It's funny. People in my comments will still be like, hi, Glenda <laughs> and stuff like that. And not to like call anyone out, but like, I think it's really funny because I'm like, the lovely, lovely Lachlan Watson is not me, sadly. <laughs> yeah, the end of this episode gives us a hint of Glenn and Glenda. We don't Oh my gosh, their outfits, the what a tease. I know, I can't wait. I mean, we've been waiting since Seed to see those characters again, and they've just been hinted at throughout the show. It sucks. I want to ask you guys, like, do you have scenes with them? But I know that we can't get solid answers because uh -huh. that would be spoilers. We'll have to wait until we have to watch it at the same pace as everyone else. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but all the, the Jennifer Tilly, Nika stuff in this episode was a lot of fun. Yes. I'm, I'm glad that we're getting the advancement of that storyline. Yeah, how much time do you guys spend with the, the adult cast, like even, you know, just off set or off, you know, because I'm sure you guys, you know, the younger cast, you guys hang out a lot, but do you guys see the adults very often? Yeah. I mean, I think that we all do a pretty good job at staying in touch with each other and, you know, dinners and going out. I mean, it's really tough in Toronto because COVID is so shut down still. And we are obviously super safe on set and stuff. So NBC's like, don't do big gatherings. Don't do this, don't do this. And we're like, yeah, probably not. So we try to like keep the gatherings done, do <laughs> like small amounts. But like last night, it was so much fun because everybody was there. Like all these people that we don't get to have storylines with was there like every single person so it was just so fun hanging out with everybody and getting to celebrate the work that we've all worked on for so many months now yeah for anyone watching this we're filming this the day after the premiere which was in new york right yes. yeah yeah uh, i saw pictures of you guys with alex vincent i'm assuming that's one of the people you're talking about like you don't see that often with the storylines intersecting yeah it was really really fun and i, I wish i had more stuff with the adult characters just because they're so amazing. And I mean, every time I see, like I get, have a scene with Jennifer Tilly, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, who wouldn't be? So fun. She's so much fun. And I mean, I feel like if you're gonna be around her, especially this season, the glamour, just her home and all of her beautiful outfits and just her general vibe is just so fun. Yeah, we were watching it last night and I don't know how familiar you guys are with John Waters movies. I know that he was in Seed of Chucky, but I was just watching this and I was like, I bet John Waters wishes that he had this Jennifer Tilly to put in his movies back when he was like making a lot of movies because she's just so campy and over the top and it, it never fails to make me laugh. That's gotta make it uh, hurt all the much more that you guys are just stuck in school uniforms this season. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the other storyline is like feather boas and 50s <laughs> swing dresses. <laughs> oh my gosh, our costume designers oh, are so absolutely incredible. And I was so jealous of all the costumes this year. I mean, Lexi's costumes last year were amazing. And I was like, every single time I changed, I was just more and more impressed. But I mean, I love the Catholic school uniforms. I think they're so cute. They are kind of cute. Yeah, they, they're they very like, yeah, I just think of Hogwarts because I didn't go to like a private school or anything. So that I just see that and I'm like, it's Harry Potter. It's so funny because I think the same two people who made the Harry Potter outfits made the school uniforms. Really? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. It's just funny how people, it's always like, it was like Hogwarts because it's like, I think the same person made them. They've got that niche locked down. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the same costume designer from season one? Yes. Yes. Catherine, right? Oh, Catherine Ashton. That's right. Yeah. Catherine Ashton. Catherine okay. Ashton. Bet she's having a blast because last season she got to do all the 60s and 70s and 80s stuff with oh, the flashbacks. Yeah. And then this season she gets the uniforms. And then on the flip side, like you were saying, all Jennifer Tilly's outfits. So yeah. probably a fun show for her to work on. Yeah. Because you, you think of shows like, I don't know, Walking Dead or just any. Where everything's or, dirty. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or just like plain dressed people. That's probably not as fun for the costume designer. She kills it too. Every single costume is just like. Mwah. Chef's kiss. I wanted to ask, how long of a gap was there between when you finished season one and began season two? How long were you out of the Chucky world? Six months. Did that feel like a long time or were you were you 
eager to get back or was it a nice break? Well, for me, it was like for half the time we were waiting to see if we were going to be picked up. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. So for like three of those months, we were like anticipating like, are we going to go back? Are we not going to go back? Kind of like trying to hear through the grapevine what was going on. Mm -hmm. And then once we found out we were going to go back, then it was like, I'm a big planner. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like I like to have things planned out. So we're like, okay, start packing. We have three months. We have to start packing. We have to figure out everything. We got to get ready to go back for another half a year. And then, you know, it was just like all the auditions and everything for, you know, the new characters and everything. And it kind of felt like even though we were out of the Chucky world during the whole hiatus, I still feel like we were kind of in it just because of, you know, press and, auditions and all that kind of stuff so um yeah six months Bella how quick was the turnaround between getting cast and then okay now you're on set filming I don't exactly know but it was like within a week or something no way. Like, oh, oh man God. it was ridiculously speedy because I remember being like I am not a planner planning makes me <laughs> like somehow anxious I don't know just like the thought of planning is like <laughs> So my poor mother um, <laughs> basically like forces me to plan things because I mean, it's necessary. Yeah, it was really fast. I remember being like, yeah, I got this. I got this call back for Chucky and then being like, yeah, I'm leaving the country for like <laughs> a month and stuff. I kind of liked it because it was like it was it was very speedy and like it, it was a little. Adventure. Yeah, I was just thinking that might almost be better than having to wait to film because then you don't have the time to get anxious you don't have the time to get worked up and like overthink it. You can just kind of be in the moment like, OK, here's my character. Here's my lines. And you just kind of you know, I feel like that you're almost going to get like a, a more authentic performance rather than one that you've like overthought and yeah. over practiced. Yeah. Bella and Bjorgvin, did your parents come with you to Toronto at all? Were they up there at all or were you away from them? My uh, my dad came with me because my mom would stress me out. So I okay. my dad. <laughs> is she in the room with you right now as you say that? Uh, no, my mom's gone, but my dad's here. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And Olivia, the only reason I didn't ask you is because I figured your mom was with you seeing as she is in the show. This is true. It's a two in one. I mean, if she's going to be there anyway, might as well. And I'm so glad we were talking to Don yeah, last her, week. Her doomed mayorship is yeah. such a funny storyline. Like, I know that he had thought about killing that character at the end of season one, and I'm so glad he didn't because she's just so funny. And to see you guys together is hilarious every time. Yeah, I love our relationship this year. Um, and just like even worse and either even more like just twisted. W- one thing I love about Lexi's storyline this year is I think we get to see a lot more of her and Caroline which is something I think we missed a lot last year. We saw her in Caroline and we saw that she cared for her, but we didn't really get to dive into that relationship. And I think it's really nice seeing that relationship because that is really who Lexi cares about most in the world, I think. Like that is her main priority. And she just wants to keep her safe from all of the trauma that she's endured. And she's just trying so hard to keep her away from all of it. And It's just so interesting to see that storyline going on with her just literally just despising her mother and being like, get out of this. Just let me deal with it. (laughs) And her mom just like trying so hard to be involved. Like, we've endured trauma and you need to feel it's a community. And I'm like, I hate you. It's it's, it's just... (laughs) It's so funny. I love it. I think Lexi's kind of realizing she is more of a parent almost to her sister than her mom. And that's a lot for someone that age and for what that character's gone through. And it's so interesting. Maybe I think she's also realizing you know, when you look at her personality in season one and when we first meet her, I wonder if Lexi's maybe realizing too, oh my gosh, I got so much of that from my mom. And it's this, you know, kind of self-awareness. It's heavy. It's a lot. I am excited that we'll get more of you and Caroline though in this yes, season me because too. you're right. I think it comes through in season one that she's your priority. And I think that the scene with Lexi singing her to sleep with Don't Fear the Reaper, that's like the first indication that you get that Lexi is maybe not an entirely shitty person. It's it's so funny. I mean, we said it last time we talked to you how much we hated that character (laughs) at the the first couple of episodes. And then by the end of the season, it's like, can't believe I'm rooting for this character. And it's just because of you and Don together bringing that character arc. Yeah, it is kind of wild to look at that character and who she is at the beginning versus now where she's almost kind of like the emotional 
kind of paperweight of everyone. She's the most, we've got to deal with this character. She, I don't want to say like she's kind of playing the straight man to everyone else, but she just feels so grounded compared to where she was when we first Grounded? Met she's high as a kite. Well, in yeah, this that's besides I'm all the drugs. The all the, man. I'm the straight man here. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing drugs. <laughs> that's yeah. true. Yeah. That was a straight and narrow, as they say. <laughs> yeah, not snorting Xanax or yeah, whatever. Yeah, what do they use? What do they use on oh, set? Oh, yeah. For what that? do you, what is, yeah, what are the drugs on set? Okay, so it's a mix of things. So when I'm taking pills, it's this is like I'm I'm not a drug I swear when I'm, <laughs> like, when I'm taking the actual pills and they're going in my mouth that's just dissolvable B12 okay okay ooh getting some vitamins yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thought it'd be Smarties or something I never had to snore anything ever um it was actually a kind it was kind of a cool rig that they used so they put this big vacuum like over my shoulder <laughs> oh my god it gets a whole like nozzle and then at the very end there'd be like the reason I'm always doing it out of a straw is because at the very end, there's a little straw that sticks out of the vacuum. Basically, I just put my head down there with the straw oh. and you only get the end of it. And then they turn on the vacuum and it just all goes up the vacuum. Oh my and gosh. it's actually really interesting. Any mishaps with that thing? <laughs> oh, one time it accidentally like blew forward and blew the smoke. Every- <laughs> like one time instead of going up, it went that way. And then just the powder just went everywhere. It was a mess, but. I hope the cameras oh were my, rolling the on The continuity that. just like ripping their hair out. Yeah, like, oh no. <laughs> we need a gag reel. There are too many good moments. We need one. With puppet mishaps and me being the clumsiest person in the world and falling constantly, like we just need. <laughs> Bjorkvim, what are, are, is there something specific you're thinking of right now? Because you're some, dying. There's some funny stuff. I don't want to embarrass that, but you know, there was some stuff. <laughs> you can there. say how I fall a lot. <laughs> I fall down the stairs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but sometimes those stairs are kind of rough. They're like so tight together. Yeah. Sure. I had very steep stairs in my apartment. One time everybody was over and I fell face first all the way down. <laughs> But it's fine. I, I, I would fall down the stairs a lot. It's fine. I'm just very, very clumsy. Oh my gosh. Just imagine like Flintstone or like Hanna Barbera cartoon. Oh, like on the heels. Sound, like, just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just constantly playing around you. <laughs> is there anything, without spoiling too much, is there anything that we can look forward to in episode three or beyond in this season for your characters or the rest of the show? Yes. Period. No, <laughs> don't give me that shit. He technically answered the prompt. <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, Can't be asking yes or no questions. <laughs> yeah, I think you know there's gonna be a lot of uh, really fun scenes. I'm excited for one that uh, me and Allie have. It was a really fun time shooting those scenes. Uh, I can't say what they are, but they're, they're really fun, and I'm excited for you to see that. I think it's episode five. It's nearing. It's nearing like the latter half, but there's some. Well, I'm excited for that because I don't know how much like one-on-one interactions you two had in season one. I feel like whenever you were Barely together, any. it was mostly Jake there as well, right? Like that one scene where we're t- where I'm talking to her about Charles e. Ray in the hospital. Go, yeah, yeah, hospital. I remember that. Mm-hmm. But other than that, not really much. Because something happens and it kind of it's cool. So it's cool that. <laughs> I can't say much that's, right now, but yes. That's something I think you see a lot more this season is one-on-one interactions with a lot of characters. Mm-hmm. Like you get to see like certain characters that you thought you saw a lot of in season one, but you didn't actually see a lot of really form these connections. And I had so much fun. I mean, Bjork and I had so many things together in this season, just one-on-one. And it was so much fun. And of course, I mean, Bella and I have this whole beautiful friendship arc. Um, which I love so much. Yes, you're like fun roommates. It reminds me of being in college, kind of. And like your amazing, gigantic dorm room, by the way. Oh, yeah. You guys have like a suite. It's so unrealistic. Yeah. It's so unrealistic. <laughs> Loved it, though. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's so cool. It was so amazing, though. Yeah, I mean, the it's bay window, like, it's like... It's like ours. It's kind of crazy. It is much bigger than your guys's. <laughs> yeah, like we have two beds and like a table, and then you guys have like a whole like back area, like a closet. I'm like, where's the what? Okay, <laughs> we have a walk-in closet. I know it's all fancy. Is that what that door is? By your bed? Okay. Nadine is like, I have to have the bed closer to the bathroom. And then I saw that that door back there and I was oh. like, but is that the bathroom It's a communal door? bathroom. Oh, okay. So it's in like yeah. the halls, like a dorm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. That yes. makes more sense. That might be my favorite line of the series for me. <laughs> well, when Chucky's hunt- hiding under your bed, we're like, is Chucky about to get I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to pee out on Oh my God, gross. <laughs> That was your first thought. Oh my god! But like, you, you would else deserve did we it. Bring it up. He would deserve it. You know, if it happens, then good. I, I, was, I see, was like, oh no, he's in the splash zone. He Get would like there. it, honestly. Dude, did, did you say he would like it? I feel like he would. I feel like he would. Yeah, he'd be like, "This is to stop me." 
<laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Oh, he's a, he's a nasty little guy. <laughs> he's, he is a nasty little fucker. Yeah. And that's what he is. Yeah. Well, we're super excited to see the rest of the season. Uh, we're working through them piecemeal, but we did get episodes three and four, hon. So now did we, we really watch the next one. Yeah. Please let us know. Yeah. I think next week we'll be talking to Tony Gardner. How much interaction with him do you guys have on set? Is he... Is he there operating the puppet, or at this point, is he more of like a supervisor and he has the rest of his team doing the on-set operations? I don't think I never really saw him on the puppet, but I think he was out in the back, like a uh, like doing the more like, like like the tech stuff, like the audio and like the controllers, more than actually moving the puppet around. Okay, he does a lot of like facial expressions. Oh um, yeah, because that's so important. Yeah, like the mouth and the eyebrows and the smiles and the blinks and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have all the other puppeteers, Pam and Gordon, everybody actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dude, they're incredible. Ever since I learned that Gord was, um, was a Zibumafu. Wait, 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 what? Yeah, Gord did Zibumafu. He did, he was like the lemur? Yeah, he was the lemur. And also did like Fraggle Rock, I think. And I was like, what? Holy shit. Zibumafu? I was like, dude, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I haven't thought about Zabumafu in like a decade. Yeah, I was I was thrown by speaking of like the Chucky dolls and puppets. We actually borrowed one of the screen used Chucky's from season one for a video James was filming and picking it up compared to like the ones you can buy like this. Yeah. The actual like screen you know, the ones you use on screen when it's just the doll, he's not like talking or anything. I was really thrown by how toddler sized and like weighted it felt. It feels like a little person. And, and floppy it, too. Like his head was like. Yeah, you have to hold his head up like it's a baby, dude. I was kind of thrown by it. It was scary. That thing, we kind of had it just sitting in a corner <laughs> of our living room and I was freaked out by it. It has weight to it. I remember the first episode, first season um in the talent show when they did the magic reference and mm -hmm. zach had to mm -hmm. hold the puppet up for that entire day he he was dying i mean his arm was like so tired because he was holding it with one arm like this mm -hmm. he was dying i mean it's it's it has a lot of weight to it yeah especially with all the mechanics and everything inside of it but i remember that specific day he was like <laughs> oh, like his arms are like shaking yeah like that's such a specific muscle too i bet those puppeteers have like very specific like muscles of theirs that are really buff you <laughs> <Yeah>. know <laughs> it's like weird areas forearms are yoked <laughs> oh yeah devin got spit in the spit in your face Oh yeah, Chucky spit on you, bitch. How, how'd they do that? I was not really worried. I was worried, uh, worried about like where, where it would go. I didn't want my and I didn't want in my eye and stuff. But the guy, um, I forgot his name, but the guy, he's so cool. He, he was like, yeah, I tested it on myself first before I give it to you, so it's fine. It tastes like it's not anything. It, go, it can go in your eyes, fine. I was like, okay. After listening to him, I was less worried, and I got sprayed like right in the mouth. Ugh. It didn't taste that bad. It tastes like cucumber water. It's oh, cucumber. Oh, okay. It, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. That makes it even worse. Chucky <laughs> <laughs> has good dental hygiene. I guess so. Yeah, right. Chucky always brushes every morning. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Did they like shoot it out of some kind of like gun or hose or something? Yeah, it was like a, they basically had, I think, I think Chucky was still there and had like some kind of weird tube thing that was putting at me and it kind of went, it was kind of, yeah, just they went, <clears throat> Like, <laughs> my biggest fear for that would be reacting too early you know the anticipation oh, of like, like you, you know, know it's gonna coming. happen yeah. yeah yeah i just tried looking at chucky because the because the tube was like away from him so i just looked at chucky and when i got sprayed and then i reacted yeah and, I, and, I, and then it was such a small neo i kind of forgot it was there the tubes and vacuums budget of this show probably <laughs> bigger than any ep any show currently airing <laughs> so many tubes i mean chucky chuck i mean think about how many times chucky's thrown up or done all these things like there are lots of things bodily fluids Just so many fluids yeah for sure coming out of chucky and also uh lots of drugs so you know you're, you gotta have some tubes <laughs> you need tubes <laughs> chucky season two you need tubes you need lots of tubes chucky season tubes yeah there we <laughs> yeah. go chucky season tubes that's what it is great good call bella better leave on that high note so Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to join us i know that it's uh you know, you had a long Whirlwind, night and yeah. I'm sure you got plenty of travel ahead of you. So really appreciate you taking the time out to, yes. to talk to us. Yes, talk. this was such a great start to our day. I love talking to you all. I'm so happy for you guys. You guys are just so fun to talk to, too. I could sit here and just chat all morning. I mean, I still say like from last year, you guys are like our favorite interview we did last year, too. I always remember it just because it's so you guys are so much fun. And I love seeing 
people that are big as horror geeks as we are. So, <laughs> oh Hell yeah, I'm a big fan of like you know like the death count and stuff. So I I watched it a lot, and now I was like, I'm gonna interview with James the, the man himself. On the <laughs> Oh my gosh. I hope we can all do something in person one day. We'll have a big, yeah. just big group hug. You guys are the sweetest. Thanks again for joining us. And so nice to meet you, Bella. Hope yes. to see more of you Thank in the future. Thank you. It's so that, nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Hope you don't get killed off too soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thanks again to the kid cast for joining us for our discussion of episode two. Yeah, that was so much fun. I love talking to him. I love this entire cast and show. My heart is so full. And next week, if you didn't hear me say it, we will be talking to Tony Gardner and uh, possibly another member of the crew. So we'll get some more behind nice. the scenes. Ooh, info. that'll be a very technical episode. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk it. more about tubes and vacuums. Exactly, Chucky season two. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So hope you're enjoying Chucky as much as we are. And we'll see you next week on the Chucky 2 after show on Dead Meat. There's not really an official name, but you know what it is. Yep. We'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs>